What's up guys? So today I want to take some time and talk about a topic that you guys really want to know about and you guys are super interested in because I get a ton, a ton of questions. This is probably like the second most asked question that I get and it is how to reverse diet properly. Um, and this video has taken me quite some time to decide to put out there because it is so individualized. It's on a case by case basis and Honestly, I can say every single client of mine that I have reverse dieting is totally different. Um, the way we do things is completely different. Uh, the way their bodies respond, how many calories to give them, how much cardio to give them. It's so individualized that it's really hard for me to put information out there that's useful for you guys. So I kind of came up in, with like a little bit of a general guideline that you guys can use and I hope you guys find it useful. But, reverse dieting, here we go. What is reverse dieting? Reverse dieting is basically dieting, but going the other way. So, you're gonna increase your macros and your calories very slowly over time. And this is basically because if you were to give yourself a ton of macros, ton of calories all at once, your body wouldn't know what to do with it. It wouldn't metabolize very well and more than likely you're going to gain a lot of fat because your body doesn't know how to process that amount of calories all at once. So the whole idea about reverse dieting is getting your body to be able to metabolize all of those calories and extra macros that your body's giving it for energy and for fuel. So that is reverse dieting and honestly I can say I went through my first real reverse dieting this past, I don't know, eight months and it completely changed my life. It completely changed the way I thought about food. Yes, I've been flexible dieting for almost two years now, but there's something about reverse dieting that really, really changed the way I looked at food and really changed the way I weight lifted as well. And this is for a couple of reasons. So being a woman, Basically, we have been told to restrict our food to lose weight and do a ton of cardio to lose weight and you have the bad food list that you're not allowed to eat and if you eat that, I mean, you'll gain a ton of fat. So that was kind of how a lot of society has taught us women to live and so reverse dieting and flexible dieting, I'll go into flexible dieting in a different video. But reverse dieting really helped me boost my metabolism, yes, but it helped me increase my food and calories in a way that I've never been able to do before. I was eating close to 3,000 calories and it's the most I've ever eaten and the less I've weighed, if that makes sense. So I was eating 3,000 calories and weighing an amount that I would not have weighed in the past if I ate that much. I can honestly say that 95% of inquiries that I get from women don't eat enough calories. And honestly, when I see that, being a responsible coach, I can't let that person go into a cutting phase. I tell them, you know what, we can either work on your metabolism and we can reverse diet and build your calories, build your macros slowly over time, get you lifting heavy, get you having energy, get you sleeping good, get your body to hormonally be stable. And then once your body is at a great place, when you're mentally and physically at that point where you feel like we can cut, then we can go into a cutting phase. But if you are solely set on cutting right now, I tell them, you know what, I'm sorry, but I don't feel comfortable doing that. So I can tell you that most people out there don't eat enough from what I'm seeing on my end. Um, and here's how to change this. If you track on MyFitnessPal for let's say five consecutive days, see where your calories are at, get a ballpark range of where your macros lie, and then from there, decide on your set maintenance macros slash calories. Um, and then at that point, you want to slowly increase those over time. Now, what I would first recommend you to do, bring protein up to body weight per pound. So say I weigh 120 pounds, you're gonna bring your protein up to 120 grams. Take that, do that for a couple weeks, make sure your protein's at a good level, and then let's start getting into the carbs and then the fats. So 
you're going to have to see how your body responds to this. It's either going to be very good at metabolizing what you put in it or it's going to be a very slow process and you're not going to be able to increase as much as you'd like but still make small increases. So if you're that person who you can put in 25 grams of carbs each week or every other week, I would recommend to increase your carbs by 25 grams every other week and your fat by three to five grams every two to three weeks as well. So you wanna make sure, since you are in a growing phase, I prefer to have a lot of glycogen uh, in my system carbs for my lifting. So if you're the same exact way, I would recommend to focus on a lot of carbs and then obviously getting your fats to a good level, uh, but I would focus on bringing your carbs up and utilizing that for fuel during training. If you're someone who you feel like you blow up, like gain three to five pounds when you add a little bit of carbs in or a little bit of fat in, then you need to take this slow. So what I recommend is to add 10 grams of carbs every other week and add in, let's say, three to four days of HIIT cardio, maybe five rounds of 20 second intervals, 20 second sprinting, uh, do that at least, let's say, five days a week. One week on, one week off, one week on, one week off. So the day, the weeks that you increase your carbs by 10 grams, throw in that HIIT cardio. Then the next week, take out the cardio, keep that 10 grams in, make sure your body can utilize that fuel on its own without cardio, and then the next week, add another 10 grams of carbs, add the cardio. Next week, drop the cardio. Add the cardio, add the grams, Drop the cardio. Does that make sense? So you're adding in carbs very slowly. You're getting your body to utilize it. You're getting your metabolism up through the cardio. And hopefully you'll only gain just a few pounds doing it that way. With your fats, same thing. You want to increase your carbs by 10 and then, you know, drop the cardio. And then maybe that next week you increase your fats by 5. So you want to make sure that you're balancing your carbs and fats at a good level. I say for females, I don't like going lower than mm, 40 grams on a regular day. Uh, I prefer a little bit higher because being female, uh, our hormones really, really, really do need those essential fatty acids. So personally, I like to eat, you know, a good, good amount of fat just to make sure those are on point. And I also make sure that my clients have a good amount of fat as well. So bringing that fat up to a good level that you're comfortable with and then maybe focusing on carbs from there on out. So you're increasing your macros and calories and let's say you've been doing this for three months, you've gotten your calories very, very high, you're eating really, really good, you're having a lot of energy and all of that, but you've gained a little bit of body fat and you're not necessarily comfortable, you're feeling pretty lethargic in the gym, um, your energy is just down and you just feel blah. I would recommend then going through a mini cutting phase. Now this is completely not necessary uh, going through a mini cut, but if you're kind of feeling like uncomfortable and just low energy because of the amount of food your body's not able to process as well anymore, then I would recommend going through a mini cut. So I would recommend reducing your calories maybe by 300 calories if that and then just coasting from there and maybe adding a little bit of cardio do that for about a month and see how you feel and then maybe start reversing again i can tell you the number one way your body is going to do extremely well with reverse dieting is making sure you're weightlifting and making sure you're weightlifting hard so i would recommend incorporating strength movements. I would recommend incorporating drop sets. I would recommend incorporating volume. I would recommend trying to use a ton of different techniques but making sure that you are weightlifting at least four days a week, maybe even more if you prefer. But if the more lean mass you gain, the better your metabolism is going to be. So if you think that you're gonna get bulky with lifting weights, that's not true. Women don't have enough testosterone to look like a man. So get in there, get set up with a program, write down a workout, look on YouTube, feel comfortable with going in the gym and then hit it hard. I would recommend 100% weightlifting while you're doing your reverse diet because you're gonna see the optimal results doing that. Another thing I wanna talk about is insulin sensitivity. That's another reason why you might wanna go through a mini cut. The more insulin sensitive you are, 
the better anabolic effect that carbs are going to have on your body, meaning carbs are going to have an actually fat burning effect on your body. So you want to make sure that you are insulin sensitive and staying insulin sensitive during this process, which can be hard if you're shoveling and shoveling carbs in all the time. So you want to make sure that is on point. Uh, maybe try going through mini cut for that reason as well. Honestly guys, it's a crazy ride. Increasing calories, staying, you know, within a good range of body fat, uh, being flexible, being able to go out with your friends and eat and, you know, being able to fit in alcohol because you have so many calories. You know, just feeling like a normal person. I don't know about you guys, but in the past, I used to have major restriction problems on food. And I'll do a video, I'll do a current video on this, but if you want to check out my story, I have it way far back on my YouTube channel. But I used to have a crazy, like, restriction on food and a crazy, like, workout schedule. And honestly, flexible dieting has changed my life, but reverse dieting has changed my life even more. I have never experienced feeling so strong in the gym and I've never experienced, you know, getting my metabolism up to a good rate to where I'm eating so much food. I've never experienced being able to sleep so well at night and like get all my hormones back in check and I don't know, it's just so good for you mentally to push back, push past an uncomfortable barrier that almost every female goes through. And I can tell you right now that there are times that you're going to feel extremely uncomfortable and there are times you're going to want to quit your reverse diet. You may look at yourself in the mirror and be like, I don't like what I see. I'm used to being super, super tiny. But those are the days that make you stronger. You have to realize that people are going to love you for you. And if you put on body fat, no one's going to look at you differently. No one's going to think less of you. You need to love yourself for who you are as a person you need to realize that you are more than your body you're more than your body weight you are doing this because of your health you're doing this to help your metabolism you're doing this to get strong there are so many benefits to reverse dieting you need to think of those benefits and positives because those negative those little negative things in your head that the devil's speaking to you you need to shut those off as quick as you can I'm just going to be straight up. There is going to be days where you're going to be uncomfortable, but you will grow so much within this journey. Going through my cutting phase right now, I think we've been cutting for eight weeks. I've never seen my body do so well with such a minimal drop in macros with like almost absolutely no cardio. Uh, so that is definitely a huge benefit to reverse dieting. Obviously, that's one of the main reasons why you're reverse dieting is so that when you do go on a cutting phase, you don't have to kill yourself to get to where you want to be. That's not normal. You shouldn't be having to go so, so low calories to see results. That's what I have for you guys today. I know that it is kind of hard to pinpoint exactly what you should do with your body, but I kind of wanted to explain the process and give you some general guidelines, at least just something out there to give you guys and like what it is and how I've been feeling on my first diet and my cutting phase and everything. Hope you guys have been joining me for this shred series. Uh, there's plenty more to go. I mean, we're like 11 weeks out so we have a lot more shred videos to do let me know below what you guys want to see next i'm thinking of doing like a how to calculate your macros video that's obviously again very very individualized but i'm thinking of doing one because i know that i've been getting a lot of requests for that one um so yeah thanks for watching and i will see you guys in the next video